Hi friends, welcome back to playing tribute to the Ace Attorney original trilogy. We are on the last game, Trials and Tribulations, and on the second case of that game, The Stolen Turnabout, Part 3, where we just found out that there was a murder uh, at the same time as the larceny case that we just finished. We just got Mr. Delight off the hook for that, and now he's been arrested for murder. So... Let's see what we can figure out and find out about this case uh, of the murder of Kane Bullard, the CEO of KB Security. You know, I'm glad we found the urn and all, but poor Mr. Delight got arrested again. Well, supposedly, Mr. Delight was in the CEO's office when the murder occurred. No way, Jose! I don't buy it. But the one who proved that Mr. Delight was there... It was Mr. Nick himself. At least from what I can understand. Looks like you did too good of a job this time, Nick. Uh, well... How about we get started looking into the KB security murder? I think I'm going to head back to Curian Village for a little while, if that's alright. Sure, but why? I'm going to bring the sacred urn back and have some people take a look at it. Oh, that's a good idea. I think I'll go with... No, Mystic Maya! You should stay here! I want you two to spend some special quality time together, full of love and happiness. Maybe Pearls is just so caught up in her fantasy she forgot there's a murder to solve. No, remember, no fighting, okay? She's gone. Okay, Nick, time to get going on this murder investigation. Alright. Uh... I hate that there's, you know, limited place to go. Because I want to go to KB Security. But maybe I'll go by way of the detention center? Maybe I can talk to Ron. As I've said in later games, it, there's more ability to point to pick different locations, more locations. Anyway, I already told you, it's not me! A sad, pitiful whine that tapers into silence. Sounds like they're interrogating Mr. Delight right now. Man, we don't have enough time as it is. Yeah, well, I guess the police are going crazy just like we are. Yesterday, they thought he was just a thief, but now they got a murder case on their hands. I guess you're right. That guard over there looks a bit on edge, too. Come on. We'll just have to come back later. Okay, let's go check out some other place, Nick. Alright, hopefully I can get to the K... I can't get to the KB security... Okay, maybe I'll go through here. Oh, Nicky boy! Maya! Miss Delight. All I wanted to do was help my dear Ronnie. Yeah, but I guess it ended up hurting his case. Don't say that, Nick. She doesn't need your help beating herself up. I forgot to turn off my phone's uh, ringer again. Sorry. Interruptions. Hey, Nicky boy. Please, please help Ronnie. He's not a killer, I swear. My Ronnie wouldn't hurt a fly. All right, I'll poke around and see what I can find out. Really? Are you serious? Oh, I'm so happy. I knew asking for your help was the right thing to do. I, I don't know what I can do to help anymore. I had no idea Miss Delight had such a vulnerable side. What can you tell me about Ron? Listen carefully, Nicky boy. My Ronnie would never, ever kill anyone. It's just not in him. I don't think he would either, Nick. Yeah, but you have to admit he's got a bit of a temper to him. It's not that hard to imagine him just snapping and screaming, PLEASE DIE! He would never say that! Anyway, Miss Delight, he might not be a killer, but he's still going around saying that he's a thief. I already told you, that's just a fantasy for him. Miss Delight, I hate to say it, but you're the one living in a fantasy world. What? How dare you say that to me, Nicky boy? I know everything about my Ronnie. We don't have any secrets between us. Ronnie isn't the thief type. He's so honest that he wouldn't even sneak a nap. 
he's so honest that he wouldn't even steal a glance. Thief! <laughs> the very idea. I guess I just don't get it. Huh? Get what? I just can't understand how they can be so different and yet be such a happy couple. Yeah, they sure are different. Come on now, Nikki boy. It's not that mysterious, is it? It was love at first sight. For me, anyway. What? F for you? Okay, please. Uh, so what was it... Was it really love at first sight when you first met Mr. Delight? Well, maybe not at first sight, but Ronnie saved my life. Saved your life? I was at work one day when two robbers suddenly rushed in. Well, I'm not the kind to just curl in a little ball into a corner, so I fought back. Robbers? Yeah, they took me hostage. I was so frightened. They were both carrying these huge knives, and I broke down into tears. Yeah, I would too if I was in that situation. Oh, I think I get it. Did Mr. Delight come running to save you? Yes, exactly! I remember he looked so handsome in that guard uniform of his. He went right up to those two knife robbers and screamed in their faces. Please stop it! He screamed. I could see the robbers' faces turn pale. That high-pitched shriek of his does have a surprisingly strong effect on people. Then, crying and swinging his arms like crazy, he attacked the two robbers. All by himself. He came to save me, a total stranger. All by himself. He was so scared that he was crying and shaking, but he still risked his life for me. Wow, that's a great story. Yeah, he may not look it, but in a tough situation, there's no one better. That's why I fell in love with him like I did. <laughs> that's so romantic. I'd fall in love too, I guess. Nick, I hope you'll do the same for me if I ever get taken hostage. With Maya, that possibility always seems to loom in the not-so-distant future. She was already taken hostage. I'd like to say that I, I did well. I hate these kind of people more than anything. Um, you mean ace detectives? No, I'm fine with ace detectives. Oh, so then you must mean thieves. No, they're alright too. I just hate thieves that pretend to be ace detectives. There's nothing I hate more than cowardly men. By the way, why did you go to Detective Atme's office anyway? Well, as the trial went on, I started to get more and more nervous. I went there to try to find out more about the real criminal. The real criminal? Yes, obviously, the real Mask to Mask is not my Ronnie, right? Yeah? And Detective Atme knew more about Mask to Mask than anyone else. They mentioned him on the Great People of the Town segment on TV. So then you went there to ask him some questions. That's right. I'll do whatever it takes to save my man. His secretary said that Ace Detective isn't in right now. But I forced my way past her and into his hideout. I wouldn't exactly call that office of his a hideout. That bag was sitting right there on top of the table. Oh yeah, we saw that bag yesterday too. There's nothing lower than someone who would try to pin a crime on someone else. Miss Delight, do you know about KB security? Don't be silly, of course I do. That's where my Ronnie works. So she thinks he still works there, huh? Oh, that's right. According to what we heard today... It was once... He was the professional security guard. So what happened? He quit. He doesn't work there anymore. Looks like Miss Delight doesn't know. KB security is only about 20 minutes away. By motorcycle, that is. Larry told me it takes 30 minutes by car. Well, I have to admit, I tend to fly pretty fast on my bike. To make it to KB security that fast, are you sure you aren't literally flying? Why don't I give you a ride sometime? Or better yet, how about now? Um, no, no, I'll, I'll pass the thanks. Why don't you just tell us where it is and we'll go ourselves? <laughs> what a scaredy cat you are, Nick. Mr. Light told us the location of KB Security. Okay, let's head over there right away, Nick. Alright, let's do it. Now we have the location.
So I guess this is where it all went down, huh? The walls in here look thick. Just like you'd expect in a CEO's office. What has that got to do with anything? Hey! It's you guys! Oh, it's Detective Gumshoe. Today was a real train wreck for you guys, huh? Sure was, pal! That prosecutor made real fools out of us! Yeah, I feel for you. Wow, that's not like you at all. I thought you'd be more like... Oh, that was great! You guys got what you deserve, pal! Ho 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 ho! Or something to that effect. Do I really sound like that to you, pal? If the gumshoe fits! Oh, uh, well, anyway... The point is, I can tell when someone puts their heart into their jobs. And I can sympathize when things don't go your way. Sometimes I feel like I'm... Like, wrong is the only way things go for us detectives. Wow, I had no idea Detective Gumshoe was such a nice guy. Now if this little love fest is over, maybe we can start investigating? Talk to me, pal. What happened? Detective Gumshoe, tell us what you know about the murder. Ah, uh, okay. But the thing is, I'm really not supposed to. Hey, come on. What about how we put our hearts into our work? Things are really working against us right now and we need help. Uh, okay, okay, I'll tell you. Just don't start crying on me, okay, pal? Okay, I won't cry on you, pal. The victim's name's Kane Bull Bullard. He was the CEO of KB Security and a pretty big fella on his own right. His corpse was discovered at 9 o'clock this morning. His estimated time of death was 1 in the morning on October 12th. Cause of death was blunt force trauma to the head. Probably an object in this room. Happened at exactly the same time that Master Mass was stealing the arm, huh? So, why did it take almost an entire day to discover the body? There's a good explanation for that one. Bullard's body was stashed away inside the safe. Safe? Well, it is pretty big. Nobody had heard from him, and when they opened the safe this morning, out he came. Oh, so the body fell out. That white string must be the shape of when he fell out. I think we still need some more information about Mr. Bullard. Maybe you could start by getting the man's name right. So, um, what happened to Mask to Mask? He's at the detention center, screaming like a madman. Investigate me again! He keeps yelling. Uh, no, no, I didn't mean him. He's not the real thief anyway, right? Oh, you mean the detective at me? <laughs> oh, that was great. That guy got what he deserved. <laughs> now that's the detective I know and love. Think about it. Atme was always around when a calling card showed up, but he always mysteriously disappeared when the heist took place. I was hiding at the crime scene. Huh, <laughs> yeah, right. That's the lamest thing I've ever heard. That's how you just knew he was a thief. That would explain how he was able to retrieve the stolen item he keeps bragging about. Yeah, he just did that to make himself look like a great detective. That's all. But there's this one thing I can't figure out about his first heist. His first heist. Yeah, the Tear of Eminon case. There was a witness on that one. A witness? Here, I saved the newspaper clipping. Since the thief is already under arrest, you guys can keep it. Hey, this guard here. Haven't I seen him somewhere before? It's pretty small, so it's kind of hard to see, but now that she mentions it... This was the precious gem. The tear of Eminon was the target of last night's robbery. Priceless stolen. The gem and the thief. Oh, that prosecutor! I really don't like that guy. The way he used our own evidence to do that to Mr. Delight? Yeah, I think he did it in that way, just because he knew it'd hurt more. And that's what my gut tells me anyway. So who is that Java ad addicted? Java addicted masked maniac anyway. Prosecutor Godot? He's quite the enigma, huh? Thing is, pal, I never even heard of the guy before. He just showed up one day at the prosecutor's office. Came out of nowhere. That's right, he said this was his first case as a prosecutor. And it's true, according to the records anyway, but no way he's an amateur. He's an Iceman in court. A maverick that gives me goosebumps. Goosebumps? You? Yeah. I knew something was off about him, so I asked around. Nobody would talk to me. They all just turned the other way. 
Poor Detective Gumshoe. I had no idea you were so unpopular. Uh, no, that's not what I meant. That Gado guy acts like he knows me and has a grudge against me. I get the feeling he's hiding some kind of dark secret. So, Maya said she wanted to learn more about... Bullard. Detective Gumshoe, tell us more about Mr. Shane Bluebard. That's Kane Bullard, not Shane Bluebard, pal. Oh, yeah. The victim in this case just doesn't make much of an impression on me. Well, you were the victim up until Mr. Bullard was found dead. Yeah, and his body wasn't discovered until this morning. Anyway, we don't have enough information yet. Can you help us out? Sorry, I'm actually a little confused myself. For some reason, I'm just blabbing like an idiot right now. Okay, Nick. Now's our chance to get more information about the victim, so hurry up and ask. Can you tell us some more about Mr. Bullard? He was the CEO of KB Security, right? What kind of company is it anyway? Well, the company basically sends security teams out to buildings to guard them. Mr. Bullard must have had the chance to learn a lot of secrets during his kind of work. Oh, and? And I don't know how to put this, but the guy was kind of a money grubber. Really? Me too. I just love money. Can't ever get enough. Please stop leaning in toward me like that. You aren't getting to my wallet. Anyway, looks like he did some pretty shifty stuff to earn his millions. Oh, so that's my problem. I think I need to be shiftier. Let me go already. Apparently, he was involved in selling trade secrets between rival companies. Oh, that's pretty dirty and underhanded. Yeah. Oh, KB Security used to head security operations against Mask to Mask. What? Really? Yeah. And after screwing up so many times, and the company's reputation really took a nosedive. So it really was Bullard who sent Ron the blackmail letter, huh? Alright, time to look around. What do we got? These look like some kinds of bookshelf, rolling cabinet hybrid. You can't get in between these two shelves. Don't strain yourself trying, it looks like the shelves are controlled by a special panel. So I guess that's one shelf at a time, huh? Looks like they're filled with bunches of files. Yeah, files filled with data about security guard jobs they were hired to handle. It'd be a good night's reading, if you got insomnia. I was hoping for something a little bit more exciting, like UFOs or something. Well, let's see what the file is that they have out here. Check out this big, thick binder here. Leave the heavy lifting to me, Nick. Reading a file isn't exactly backbreaking work. Just a little hard on the eyes. Ah! What did you find out, Nick? This file. It's not about any sort of security operations or anything. This huge file is all about mask to mask. It's filled with info on him. What? What kind of info? It's filled with incredibly detailed information about his methods and the crime scenes. Hey, Nick. Look at the last page. It's a list. Let's see. Tier of Eminon, $100,000. This looks like a list of all the treasures that Mask to Mask stole. So then $100,000 is the value of the stolen item? I don't know. That number sounds kind of low to me. I think I'd better secretly make a copy of this list. There's a big red button back here. I want to press it. Oh! There's a button here! Let's see. Maybe she wants to press it. Hey, cut that out! Don't press that! <laughs> that was pretty funny. I never knew Detective Gumshoe could jump like that. What is this button anyway? It's an emergency buzzer. It says right there on the panel. Oops, you're right. It's written right there. Nick, how many times have I told you to read the instructions first? This alarm's connected to the basement guard room. It's used to summon security up here. Really? Then it's possible on the night of the crime. Oh, so when the CEO was attacked, do you think that maybe he pressed the buzzer? Yeah, I thought about that, so I asked around down there. But they said that the buzzer never went off that night. Also, we couldn't find any fingerprints on the buzzer. Mr. Bullard, the victim, wasn't wearing any gloves, by the way, just so you know. Hmm, I think we'd better go and talk to that guard about his emergency buzzer.
This must be the CEO's desk. It's a lot simpler than I would have thought. Hey, that looks like a super soft chair. Let me try it out, just for a second. Ooh, nice. I feel just like a CEO. Hey, you! Whip me up a cup of some really expensive import tea and some scones. Move it! Ah, this is the life. Um, the victim sat in that chair just before he was brutally killed, you know. Eek! This rope... You think it fell out of the safe when it was opened? I don't think so. So, you mean... Yeah, I think this string shows where and how the corpse was laying. You mean... The victim. He was killed by being crushed by the safe door? She can't be serious, can she? Ugh, think about it. A dead guy was laying in here all night. Yeah. Oh, by the way, don't bother asking about fingerprints. There were none. Well, somebody opened the safe on the night of the crime, right? Yeah, and so... Well, if Mr. Bullard's body was hidden in here, it must mean that it was opened by either the killer or the victim, right? Um, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I got some bad news for you, pal. Are you ready? Uh, okay, shoot. Opening this baby is no piece of cake. There are only a few people who know how to open the safe, pal. Yeah, and? Everyone that knows how to open the safe had airtight alibis. I checked. Everyone, except one, that is. I'm almost afraid to ask. Former security chief, Ron Delay. Security chief? Wow. I can't picture him being in charge of anything. What? Ron Delight? He was a security chief? Yeah, exactly. Ron? So he knew how to open the safe, huh? Yeah, sorry for raining on your parade there, pal. Okay, I think that might be all we have to we'll be able to find here. We better go to that security office and talk about the uh, button, I guess. <laughs> In case you forgot who we might find here, uh, there's his jacket. Wow. This is really something else. For his security guard office, it sure doesn't feel very secure. KB security guard. Uh oh, I just remembered. Larry might be. Hey, Nick, what's up? Ugh, so he is here. Yo, how's it hanging, dude? And you got my sweet little Maya with you, too. Hi, Larry. Don't encourage him. <laughs> Here I was working my fingers to the bone. And in walks an angel. I've got no problems with the daytime date. It's all good. No, that's not what we're here for. We're investigating the Bullard mu murder case. Huh? Oh, yeah. That's right. You're a lawyer, aren't you? He's so hopelessly clueless. Well, if it's about the murder case, boy, have I got some good info for you. Really? What is it? Hmm. Well, I don't mind sharing with my sweet little Maya, but Nick here's a different story. But Larry, I thought you two were old school buddies. And that was then, and this is now! Oh, Larry. Come on now, tell me the good info. What's this good info you're talking about, Larry? Hey, I'm a guard, a pro! I just can't give away information for free. He went to bribe. I thought professionals were more, or, I don't know, honest. Can you talk to him? Uh, can you talk to him, Maya? Larry, tell us already. What's the good info? Hey, I like that. This kitten has got some claws. Okay, you really want to know? Yes, yes. So tell me. All right. So the thing is, Ron Delight was an employee here. And naturally, since I'm a pro, I looked into his background. Follow me? Yes, you're a pro. I follow you. Go on. Well, one year ago, Ron Delight was fired. And there was no warning at all. It just happened all of a sudden. I know, this is a small company, but I think that was pretty awful. I guess he must have done something bad to have gotten fired like that. Like maybe skipping out of work to go pick up hot chicks or something. No, that's just you. So what is it like to be a part-time security guard? Let me tell you, it's tough. Well, you know me. I get by alright, I guess. First, I have to keep my eye on those monitors. All the time. Monitors? And there are security cameras set in each room around the building. It's really hard. Sometimes I feel like my eyes are gonna fall out. 
Oh. Whenever I see something suspicious, I have to contact one of the teams. What teams? The security teams for this company. They're supposedly the best in the business. But I'm no amateur either, so if it's something small, I don't bother calling them. So in other words, you basically watch TV screens all day long. You were in this office when the murder took place, weren't you? Why do you say that? This is just a part-time job for me, and I can't operate the equipment. And I'm dumb! Even if it is part-time, and you are dumb, you're still in charge of security here. Hey, give me a break! Don't try to pin the whole thing on me! That's not fair, Nick. Huh? I don't think you can expect someone like him to take any responsibility. Anyway, the point is you were here that night, right? Oh, Larry. <sighs> I knew something smelled bad, and it was the butts after all. <laughs> well, it's like I always say, that was then and this is now, okay? It looks like I'm going to have to break the psyche lock after all. I wonder if uh, there's anything else that I can get from him. Can you tell me about the boss? Probably not. Okay. Oh, the 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 buzzer. We that's what we had to look at. See, it's so easy to forget what I came here for when Larry Butts is on the job. Oh. Or not. Okay. Fine. Um Unless the security buzzer is how I prove that maybe he wasn't in here at the time? Let's let's just take a look at the psyche lock and see how far we can go with it. Sometimes that's the best uh the best thing to do. On the night of the crime, were you working hard like you were supposed to? What? Huh? Of, of, of course I was. Why wouldn't I have been? But don't you sneak out of work yesterday just yesterday to go see Miss Delight? Haha, <laughs> but that was that, and this is this. Is there any chance that you snuck out of work last night, too? Never! I didn't sneak out. I'll tell you what, I even bet you a dollar. A dollar, wow, now that's confidence. What's with that drenched in the rain puppy look on your face? Do you have evidence that, left my posi that I left my position, or are you just pulling my chain? The evidence that Larry was not manning the station when the murder happened... But there are no fingerprints on it. Is it the very fact that he's d that the guy's dead? Like he didn't see? Okay, it's either he didn't see it or the buzzer. So. Let's go with the buzzer first. Nope, probably not. Yeah, 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 whatever. Fine. Wow, 70 cents. <laughs> his favorite. <laughs> What's with the baby who had his favorite toy taken away from him? Look on your face. Is it the fact that he died? Nope, I'm gone. I'm I'm done. I'm I'm piecing out. Let's get some better information here. Should investigate and gather some more clues before I try again. Uh, 
Oh, wait. Is it because he found the wallet? Like he was outside of the CEO's office? No, because that would be obviously after Crown did it. Uh, talk to me, Gumshoe. Nope, he's not gonna talk to me either. Okay, fine. <laughs> okay. Let's go here. Let's just... Keep going places. The Treasures of Terrain exhibit is all ruined now. Maya. I'm sorry, it's just so sad. This was our big chance for everyone to learn about the spear channeling. Maybe I can cheer her up somehow. Well, now that we've got the secret urn back, maybe they can reopen it? Really? Sure! Maybe we can label it the Urn of Mask to Mask's Desires. That would probably attract a lot of attention. Whoa! 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 That's brilliant, Nick! We can clean up and be filthy rich! Woohoo! Wow, that was surprisingly easy. It's you, Mr. Wright! Miss Andrews. What's she still hanging around down here for? Uh, so, how's it going? What about the sacred urn? The urn? Oh, that. It's been taken care of already. What do you mean, oh, that? Taken care of? Do you mean, it's been found? Yes! It was brought in during the trial today. Wow, really? You really are the greatest, Mr. Wright. <laughs> Mr. Wright had nothing to do with it. It was Mask to Mask's wife that found it. Well, anyway, I'm I'm so relieved. I just heard all about it on the news. So the detective was actually a thief all along? It looks that way right now. It's my fault. I'm the one who ended up hiring the mask to guard the treasures. Don't blame yourself. You were just doing your job. Hey Nick, if she wants to apologize, you should let her. So, when was it that you hired Detective at me again? About 20 days ago. And when was it that Master Mask's calling card arrived? That was about 10 days ago. So I spent, sent a calling card to the very place he was hired to guard. I guess that's it then. Detective at me must have really wanted the Sacred Urn after all. I guess so. What? So Mask to Mask m m murdered someone as well? Well, that's how things look right now. Yes, but I thought that he was here stealing the urn at the time. Well, we're talking about a criminal mastermind, so anything is possible. Nick, let's get down to business already. On the night of the theft, did you notice anything suspicious about Detective Atme? No, I couldn't have. After all, he was hidden the entire time. I never even caught a glimpse of him. He claims that that's the way he always operates. That's just what he says so that he can have an alibi when he commits the thefts himself. Yeah, he was caught on the crime scene photo dressed up as Mask to Mask pretty well. I'm so glad that you got your sacred urn back. Yes, but there's still something that bothers me about it. What is it? I'm not exactly sure. But somehow the urn that came back seems different. R really? You wouldn't know anything about that, would you, Miss Andrews? No, I don't know anything. Why would I? <sighs> A psyche lock. What do you think this means, Nick? It means this person has holds the secret to the mystery of the sacred urn. And that's our very own Miss Andrews.
Okay, so let's hear some about the sword. The she 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 she. Detective Atme said he got hit in the back of the head on this by the thief. But that was obviously a lie. Because it turned out that Atme was the real thief. It's so hard to believe. Looks like Adrian feels really bad about it. I'm going to take full responsibility and fix that sword myself. I know I don't look it, but I have complete confidence that I can fix it right up. I promise I'll fix it, so you never know it was bent in the first place. But please be gentle with it. But how was it bent? If he wasn't actually hit on the back of the head. I thought the whole exhibit would be brightened up by something shiny and gold. That's why I went to the trouble of borrowing it from the Branch Family's training hall. A gold statue is totally cool in my book. It arrived rather late, so I thought it wouldn't be able to put it on display. By the way, it looks like the statue was moved on the night of the theft. Do you know anything about that? Huh? No, no. It certainly wasn't me who moved it. Why is she flustered all of a sudden? there's anything to be found here. Probably not. I wonder if there's anybody to be found here. Probably not. Oh! This place is literally crawling with cops. What'd you expect, now that they know he was actually masked a mask? This must be incredibly embarrassing for them, don't you think? Yeah, I guess they're trying to make up for it by tearing the place apart. Hey, I just noticed. Gumshoe's nowhere to be seen. Well, he is a homicide detective. He's probably working on the murder case. But wasn't he in charge of the mask-to-mask -mask investigation all the way up to yesterday? Well, a murder case is a lot more exciting, isn't it? He'd say something like, There's nothing like a good murder case, pal! Points for the quality of the impression. But I'm not sure Gumshoe has bloodlust, Maya. Okay, so nothing to be found here. I don't think she's gonna help me. Maybe the detention center. Maybe I can get some more information now that I've gotten more information. Nope. There's no way that I can... Break Larry. Here I go, running around chasing my tail again. Let's see if there's something I missed. Wow, look at that huge framed photo. Tall mountains rising majestically against a dark and cloudy sky. There's a title written on the bottom of the photo. The greatest sunrise of my life. This is it? This is his best sunrise? Either this guy didn't get out enough, or he had really rotten luck with the weather. Maybe if he had lived a little longer, he would have seen better days. I think I've gotten everything from him. And he won't... Okay, what will he tell us? Will he tell us something about the newspaper clipping? This was his first heist, and I guess I under underestimated him. I was sure I was going to get him, so I was careless and lost the info on the witness. By witness, you mean the guard in this photo? Yeah. And at the detective, and he and the detective worked together to try ca catch mask to mask. But he got away anyway, huh? That guard. I got the weird feeling that I've seen him some around lately. Yeah, that's what we were talking about. What about this? Uh, so about this. Huh? What's that? Hey, wait a minute, Maya. What's wrong? We copied that data without permission. Let's show it to him. He might get mad at us. So, what are you two whispering about? Uh, nothing. It's just my billfold. That's a pretty thick billfold you got there, pal. 
think I really want you to show it to me. Oh, did I already do that? Sorry. This is proof that Ron Delight was here at the crime scene when the murder happened. His wallet and this key card, huh? I think we need to ask Mr. Delight some more about those two things. Yeah, no kidding, but we can't talk to him right now. He's being interrogated. Alright, Larry. Let's see what we've got. <laughs> That's my partner's seat. Your partner? Well, that's what I call her. She's my superior, actually. Kind of a weird old lady. Um, there's tea spilled all over that machine, you know. Ugh, don't worry about it. Just the other day, I spilled some chocolate milk on mine. It still works fine, more or less. They really know how to build them, I guess. When he says weird old lady... Please tell me it's not old bag. Hey, Larry, that's your jacket, isn't it? That's right! Um, did you know you hung it right on top of some kind of lever? Yeah, sure. I was told to never, ever touch that lever. She scowled and huffed at me. Oh, it's definitely old bag. Something terrible will happen if you do. Got it, Greenhorn? So why hang your jacket on such an important lever? Because it got me curious. If the jacket's weight pulls the lever down, that's what they call an accident. Doesn't the suspense just kill you? Don't you want to know what'll happen? Huh? It's true. It's killing me, too. What about you, Nick? Yeah, but for a different reason. Those screens there show what's going on all over the building, everywhere. And it's my job to keep a steady eye on them. All of them. I wouldn't sound so smug if I were you. Can you watch regular TV on those, too? If anyone would sit here and watch TV instead of working, it's Larry. Hey, Maya, I'm a pro, right? Besides, you can't get regular TV on it. And how do you know that, Larry? Because that was my first bit of investigation, if you know what I mean. I know what you're thinking. It was a professional investigation, all right? Okay, I've tried the button, and I tried the autopsy report, so I think that my proof is the wallet. Okay, let's try this again. Here we go. <laughs> On the night of the crime, were you working hard like you were supposed to? Okay, I think that my proof is... Um... Proof. Oh, it was. This wallet. You know about this, right? I've never seen it before. Liar! You hand-delivered this wallet to Mr. Light just yesterday. Give me a break. You can't expect me to remember every little thing that happens. Well, I do expect you to remember something that happened just yesterday. One o'clock in the morning? That's right. In other words, Larry, at the time of the murder, you were away from the security guard office. Ah! Yeah, but th there's something you didn't think about. What's that? My shift that day didn't start until 10 p.m. The murderer might have snuck in before then. What do you mean by that? If the murderer had snuck in before 10 p.m., then it wasn't my fault. It was the fault of the guy whose shift was before mine. Why do I have a feeling that he still doesn't get the seriousness of this? Listen up, Larry. We know beyond a shadow of a doubt that the killer snuck into the CEO office after 10 p.m. during your shift. Where's those uh, records of when everybody was in here? Here it is. It was used on the night of the crime. Larry, when you use this key card, does it ha leave a record? Yeah, it does. But I can't show the record just anyone, you know. That key card data was already made public in the trial today. What? I didn't know that. Any kind of request for info like that is supposed to go through me. Boy, does that sound a bit arrogant coming from a part-time job guard. Anyway, according to the data, the door to the CEO office was opened with this card. Furthermore, it was the most definitely used at 1am, the time of the murder. 
No way! Yes, someone used this to get into the CEO's office. That happened at 1 a.m. on the night of the crime, right in the middle of your shift. Oh. Larry, you can't duck your responsibility this time. Oh, no! Yeah. Sorry, buddy. So about the night of the crime... Ugh, I knew it. It's all my fault. It's my fault that the boss was killed. My fault! Larry? There was nothing I could do. I have important issues to deal with too, man. What happened that night anyway? Ah, my Donna happened. Huh? Your Donna? I get a bad feeling about this. Yeah, my Donna called and said, I have to talk to you right away. So I went to see her, and he was standing right there next to her. Um, who was? Her new boyfriend. It was some horrible joke. Before I knew what was going on, the guy socked me right in the kisser. Normally, I'm the one that does the punching. Isn't that right, Maya? Y yeah? So, is that why you left the security guard office? <laughs> I'm sorry. It's all my fault. How can I ever make up for it, Nick? What can I do? What? <laughs> He's curled up onto the floor, crying like a baby. Oh boy. Nick! Is there anything I can do? Anything! Just name it! I'll do whatever I have to do to make up for it. I swear I will. Larry. Hey, Nick. As long as he's offering, why don't you show him the evidence we've got? She's right. Maybe we'll get at least one bit of useful information from him. Nick! Alright. Buttons. Um, the buzzer in the CEO's office is directly connected to this room, right? That's right! Just like my heart is connected to yours, Maya. Uh-huh. Go ahead, Maya. Press the buzzer in your heart. I promise I'll come running to your rescue, like the professional guard I am. Wow, that was pretty good. <laughs> Thanks. I try. Do you think you could tell us about the buzzer now? Yes, please. Please tell us. Okay. I guess so. Prepare to be wowed. Um, I accidentally pressed the buzzer earlier. Yeah, I heard it. So that was you, huh? You're a security guard, aren't you? Why didn't you come to the CEO's office? Well, this is the third floor of the basement. The CEO's office is on the first floor. I thought it would be a good idea to uh, adopt a wait-and-see approach. Plus, there's a police detective here, right? I just didn't think it was necessary. It's as if he's trying to win an award for the laziest person on the planet. Um, let's get back to talking about the night of the murder, okay? Is it true that the buzzer didn't go off that night? There must be a record, right? You must have had a look at it, right? Of course I did, and I couldn't possibly have made a mistake, either. Do you think you could take just one more look for me? Pretty please? <laughs> okay. I just can't say no to you, Maya. Larry, you're such a creep. What do you think, Nick? He's probably right. I don't think even Larry can make a mistake like that. Wah! What is it? What's wrong? I made a mistake! Huh? But how? It can't be. It's impossible. Okay, enough already. What about the records? That night, it went off just once, in the morning, at around 1 a.m. 1 a.m.? That's when the murder happened! Really? Are you serious? That's terrible! It can't be! Oh, yeah, Larry, you're not looking good right now, buddy. Oh, man. Two. You guys have really made me reflect on the way I've been living. But the only problem is with all this reflecting, where's the time for love? Frankly, I think reflecting is a bit overrated, you know? What are you going on about, Larry? Plus, do you honestly have any new info on the buzzer record? Huh? The record? <laughs> no, nothing at all. This guy reflects about as much as a piece of black carpeting. I feel like we need to go tell the good detective that, uh... There was, in fact, 
the button being pressed. Detective Gumshoe. Oh, nope. Well then, I guess we're gonna move right along then. guess not. Okay. I don't think we have the information for it yet. But let me see how far I can go. Maybe it'll give me a hint of where I should go next. Sorry I'm chasing my tail again here. Jeez. Miss Andrews, do you know anything about the Sacred Urn? Do I know anything? I'm in charge of the entire treasure exhibit. The urn that was submitted before the court today... It's obviously not the same urn as before. Well, that's... that's, um, true. Maybe it isn't the same. It could be. It could be a fake. A fake. You're the one who said it wasn't the same, so that's the most obvious explanation. Do you have any evidence that the urn was submitted at the trial was genuine? Uh... no. I don't believe I do. I think I need to get that urn back from Pearl, but I literally can't because she's in Kurain Village, and I cannot get there. I've exhausted all options with her. I've exhausted all options with him. I've exhausted all options with Larry. Fancy music here is great. Did I miss something here? You must be relieved we got the sacred urn back, huh? You bet! But there's something a little different about it. Don't... me. It's pretty obvious, isn't it? I mean, take a look at this. It clearly says I am on the urn in the poster. But the urn we got back says Amy, like it always used to. Yeah, you're right, and I know all this. Don't tell me that this is the missing dialogue tray that I had. The vase has pink splotches on it now. I'm sure they weren't there before. Maya doesn't know, but one year ago, when the urn was broken, the repairer accidentally turned Mystic Amy's name into I Am. And that repairer was one mechanically unskilled little girls. But still... I don't remember ever seeing pink splotches on it. Is it possible that Urn is a fake? I'm sure Pearls will find out about it once she gets back to Kurain Village. Yeah, I suppose. Now that I think about it. Maya hasn't been back to Kurain Village. It, it was! This is the this is the dialogue tree that I was missing. So whenever you're in your office with Maya like this, her options for dialogue are always like, oh, what to do, and give me a hint of how to continue. So of course I left the office. I should have looked. Oh my goodness. Always check. I've checked every other time. Why didn't I check this time? So I guess people still go to Kurian Village to do their training, right? Yep. If you want to become a spirit medium, you need to undergo severe training. So why haven't you been training lately, Maya? Well, lately I've been thinking of heading to a channeling dojo to do just that. A channeling dojo, huh? Sounds pretty serious, whatever that is. If you're going to train, you have to be serious. Otherwise, real tragedies can happen. Is what happened last year still bothering you? I'll take that as a yes. That murder in her village. It happened because the power of channeling was misused. When a medium uses the curing technique, she temporarily loses her own will. So, when an especially strong spirit is summoned, a spirit medium can get taken over and even forced to commit terrible crimes. What's worse, in those cases, the spirit medium has no memory of what happened. Of course, that didn't actually happen that way last year. That murder, it wasn't your fault, Maya. You know that, don't you? I suppose not, but... I guess I'm still a bit shaken up, that's all. It sounds like being the master of Kurain is going to be a heavy responsibility. Sure, let's keep talking about what to do. So what do we do now? Isn't it obvious? We should go get out there and investigate the murder! First, we need to find out exactly where KB Security is located. 
Why don't we ask Mr. Light? See, she hints me to where to go. Motorcycles. You're not thinking of getting one, are you? I'm not the same little Maya who used to be happy with her dinky little bike, Nicky boy. Ugh, speaking of asking around, I've got a few questions of my own for Mr. Delight. Okay, we'll make sure to go to the detention center, too. Does that mean I can go to the detention center now? Sometimes the game can be a little bit frustrating. I'm not gonna lie. Ah! Mr. Wright! M Mr. Delight! Did they finish their interrogation? Yes, but please don't leave me alone anymore! Mr. Delight, you lied to us before, didn't you? Well, you see. On the same night, the sacred urn was stolen from Lordly Taylor Department Store. A blackmail letter you got summoned you to KB Security to hand over some money. And then, that's where the CEO, Kane Bullard, was murdered. But there's only one Ron Delight, am I right? So the only question is, where were you that night? This time I want to hear the whole truth. Your life depends on it. Okay. Mr. Delight, do you still insist that you are masked to mask? Isn't that what I've been saying since yesterday? That was a quick response. Tell me about it. To be honest, it's starting to get irritating. But listen, Mr. Delight. At the trial today, we learned the true identity of the thief, didn't we? Tragic clown. I guess it's true. I wasn't the one who stole that urn. Of course not. After all, you were KB security at the time. So then the person dressed up as mask to mask in this photo. It's gotta be Detective Atme. So that night you didn't go to Lordly Taylor. You went to KB security, right? Yes, I went to KB Security. At the time, the blackmail note said I should. Alright, what happened next? Well, I used to work there, so I knew where the CEO's office was. I knocked, but there was no answer. So then I used the keycard to unlock the door. That's probably when he dropped his wallet. When I went into the CEO's office, someone was in there. Someone? And then suddenly they bashed me over the head. Bam! Was it Kane Bullard that hit you? I don't know. The person ran away while I was still stunned. When I came to my senses, the sight I saw left me speechless. The dead body of the CEO was right there in front of me. I thought I'd die myself. Anyway, I thought I should do something with the body. So that's... So that's why you put it in the safe. Yes, that's right. Now run. I used to be the chief of the security team, so I knew how to open it. Okay, and what did you do after that? Well, I got out of there for starters. I was the one who set up the security cameras in that building. So I knew how to vo avoid being spotted by them. Nick, all of a sudden Mr. Delight kind of sounds like the murderer to me. Please don't say that. Mr. Delight, is it true that one year ago you were forced to quit KB Security? Uh, how did you... I'm begging you, please don't tell Desi. Please! D -d don't worry, we haven't told anyone yet. Phew, thank goodness. Uh, no, I am. But I suppose I'll have to tell her sometime. She'll find out eventually. Why have you been hiding it from her anyway? Desi would despise me if she ever found out I was living a life of crime. A criminal, a thief, she'd never forgive me. My marriage would be over. Knowing that, why did you become a thief in the first place? Because Desi spends money like it's water. And there's no job in the world that can bring in enough money. Except being a thief. At least that's what I thought anyway. So he became mask to mask for Desiree, huh? Hey! 
hey, this is an article about my debut heist. Boy, that was a tough one. Before I knew it, they were on my trail. But mask to mask, he must have gotten away, right? It says in the article that he disappeared. <laughs> That's right. I got a sudden burst of inspiration. I hid my mask to mask costume in a nearby plastic bucket. And then I quickly changed into my security guard uniform. Pretty clever, eh? Wow. Awesome. Hey, hold the phone. The guard in this photo. Is this you, Mr. Delight? <laughs> That's right. Nice trick if I do say so myself. Nice and easy to figure out. Even pearls could see through that in a heartbeat. But as you might expect, Detective Atme found the disguise. Oops. He truly deserves the title of Vase Detective. Detective Atme found the mask to mask disguise? Hmm, that's interesting. Yes, and I heard that he brought it home with him. So that's it. That's when Atme got his hands on this. Thanks to that, I got the chance to remake my costume. That must have been a really, really time-consuming, huh? Yes, it took quite a while to complete. Anyway, a few days after that, I received the first of the blackmail letters. But blackmail letters? What are you talking about? Oh, that's Phoenix. Sorry. What are you talking about? Hurry, tell us what you mean. Hey, calm down. Don't get so worked up. You're one to talk. This blackmail letter... Is this the first one you got? No, of course not. But it is the first one that ever called me out as a to a specific location. So, did you start receiving blackmail letters after this incident? Yes, just a few days earlier. Or just a few days after the Tear of Eminon heist. In that first letter, it said, I know you did it. So, someone found out about your true identity? Just like that? Yeah, It's not easy being a master thief, you know. I've got proof that it was you, so give up, it went on to say. But in the end, I had to give up the treasure. I went through all that trouble to steal. Is that right? Hey, hang on a second. What do you mean you had to give it up? Oh, don't worry. After I put the jewel in the safe deposit box the letter specified, someone sent me $10,000. No one said anything about me being worried, you know. After that, I started getting the plans in the mail. Plans? What are these plans you're talking about? They were instructions on how to steal a crown, or painting, or some other rare treasure. They showed security blind spots, escape routes, and even suggested training methods. So you mean that the one who planned the heists wasn't you? No, it wasn't. I only planned the very first one. After that, I received plans from some very kind person. Incredibly detailed plans. It sounds like Mr. Delight is thankful to the person who is blackmailing him. So Ron Delight was masked to mask after all. But someone else is behind the thefts. Someone who planned it all out in detail. And all I had to do was deposit the treasures I stole into the safe deposit box. Then I just waited for the cash to come in the mail. Could you try not to look so gleeful about it? So you went after the sacred urn because of one of those plans too? Well, see, truth is I've never seen the urn. All I did was follow the instructions and steal what I was told to steal. Mr. Delight, is everything you just told me the truth? Yes, but please don't tell Dusty, okay? Ron, before we go, there's one more thing I want to ask you. Yes? But please don't hurt me. Mr. Kane Bullard, do you swear that it wasn't you who killed him? Yes, of course! I could never! I'm not lying! All I did was hide his body in the safe. But then I was afraid they'd discover what I did, so I, I turned myself in yesterday. Um, why? Well, if the judge had ruled that I was guilty of robbery, then I'd have an alibi, right? Hmm, I guess so. You're really clever, Mr. Delight. I guess I have no choice but to take Mr. Delight at his word. Miss Sigmaya! Hey! Pearly! I'm back! Hey, Pearls. So what have you been up to this whole time? sacred urn, Mr. Nick. I took it back to Kyrian Village to have it examined. And? What did you find out? Well, there's no need to worry. Is it it's the real urn. Phew. That's a relief. I was really worried. But there's one small problem. Problem? 
Um, these cute little pink splotches? They said that it's paint, and they were put on it recently. Why are we talking about the pink splotches again? What's the big deal? What's the big deal? We've got to find out how they got there. That's the big deal. Yes, Mr. Nick, we've got to find out how they got there. Okay, okay, we'll go find out how they got there. Please don't forget about me. Don't worry, Mr. Delight. I could never. Alright. Off we go. To the exhibition. To finish out the last of the Psyche Box. Oh, Pearl! How nice to see you. Hello there! I haven't seen you around lately. What have you been up to? Well, actually, I was having the urn examined. Oh, I see. Maybe if we take another good look at this urn, we can figure out the mystery of what actually happened here. Nick! Let's look around one more time. Okay. Maya wants me to look around first, so let's take a look at this. And let's examine the obvious things. This box. There's something about it that's bothering me. That's the box that the sacred urn was in. It looks like there's some pink paint on it, too. And that's definitely the same color as the stuff on the urn. I think I know how the paint got on it now. Alright, let's investigate again, Nick. Okay, there we go. Looks to me like this has been dry for several days. There's something suspicious about this paint mark. The bottom left part of it is shaped oddly and it's shocking pink. Mr. Nick! Could it be that this odd shape is... Yeah. I'm pretty sure this is it. That's the box that the Sacred Urn was in! If you look here, there's a little bit of paint on the box as well. Wow! You're right! Look! It matches! What is it, Mr. Nick? This is all turning out exactly as I thought it would. I think it's all starting to become clear. We're that much closer to solving the mystery of what happened to the urn. So... Miss Andrews. Miss Andrews. Do you know anything about the Sacred Urn? Do I know anything? Blah, blah, blah. Is it the genuine article? Yes, it is. Sorry to break it to you, but the urn is the genuine article. Pearls went back to Hurian Village and had it examined. Is that right? That's nice, but I don't see how... What she discovered was that the vase was broken. Again. Did you say again? Yes. It was broken once a year ago, and now it looks like the same thing has happened. And quite recently, too. Recently? Are you saying that this urn was broken recently? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. Why do you think that it was broken recently? How do you know? It's because of the words, right? Yes. This poster? It was made recently, right? Poster? Ha! <laughs> the poster for the exhibit! At the time when the photo was taken, the urn said, I am, on it. But now, for some mysterious reason, it says Amy. When the urn was fixed, the letters were transposed. Ah! I am. What does that even mean? I don't know anything about that. It wasn't even there when the photo for this poster was taken. That was a mistake. Now, tell me... That was a mistake. Now tell me the truth. Wait. For... Even if the urn was broken, I had nothing to do with it. Huh? Yes, that's it. it. Must have been one of the people at the photo shoot. They probably dropped it. I'm sure that's what happened. Looks like I still haven't broken the entire psyche lock. Do you have any proof that the urn was broken here, Lordly Taylor? I do. Take that! Well, Miss Andrews. Um, what's this supposed to mean? There's pink paint all over this urn. Uh, and there's pink paint all over the floor and the walls of this basement warehouse. 
In other words, this urn was broken there. You can't weasel out of this one, Miss Andrews. But... Uh-oh. She's trying to make her escape. But you can get pink paint anywhere! Well, there's none in my office, that's for sure. Well, there's is in my room. Liar. Anyway, the paint on the urn and the paint on the floor. There's no proof that it's the same paint. Come on, this is getting ridiculous. The proof linking the paint on the urn to the paint on the floor is the box. This box. The urn was stored in this, right? Yes, that's right. Well, there's pink paint on this box as well. Aha! Huh. I think you already know where I'm going with this, don't you? Yes, more or less. The paint on the floor has an odd shape imprinted on it, doesn't it? Yes. If you put this box and see the impression on the paint, you can see it fits perfectly. Which means this box was dropped right there. And that is when the urn was broken. Your name does you justice, Mr. Wright. This might sound mean, but I really like her panicked sprite with her uh, folding the, the book like that. I'm so sorry. I was the one who broke the urn. Boy, does this make me feel like some sort of evil school teacher. I'm a terrible person. Not only did I break it, I tried to hide what I did. Well, that's not so hard to understand, is it, Pearly? N no, not at all. I, I know just how she feels. It happened about two weeks ago. Just after the poster photo was taken on the same day the urn arrived here. I thought I'd put it away down here for safekeeping. I was carrying it in the box. When I tripped on a paint can and lost my balance, the box I was carrying crashed to the ground. I heard a terrible noise and thought my heart was going to stop. Fearing the worst, I opened the lid on the box and that's when it happened. The broken pieces of the urn fell right out of the box and landed right in the paint. I was in shock! And let out a huge scream. Hmm. I can totally see how that could have happened. Yeah, as clumsy as she is, I'm sure Maya understands. Well, I knew it was the most important treasure in all of Kyrian Village, so I tried as hard as I could to fix it. Fortunately, the shards were pretty big. And that's when the I Am got changed to Amy. I didn't know how it was originally written, but any sane person fixing it could have assumed it said Amy. Any sane person? Really? Aw, oh, pearls. She said she wasn't very good at spelling. Anyway, I put the urn into the storeroom and no one had seen it since then. But there's something I don't get. When we first came here, I didn't see any paint stains. Well, that's because I was so ugly and embarrassing. I used the golden statue to cover it. The Amy Faye statue, huh? Let's look at this. Broken and repaired two weeks ago, then replaced in this box, kept on the side. The first time that we came down here, it was on the night that the sacred urn was stolen. But Mr. Nick, there were no paint marks on the walls or floor of this warehouse when we were here. Well, there's a good reason for that. On the day of the crime, around noon, that golden statue just happened to arrive from the mountain training hall. And? I realized that the statue would be the perfect size for covering up the paint stains. And that's why I put it where you first saw it. I see. Now it makes perfect sense. But there's still one thing I find strange. What is it, Pearl? The day after the urn was stolen, we came here again. At that time, the statue had been moved and the paint was clearly visible. She's right about that. Well... Well, Miss Andrews? Oh, what? I, I don't know anything about that. I placed it there to cover the paint, so why would I move it again? Well then, who was it? Who would have done it and why? On the day before the theft, the statue was definitely closer to the door. Then the next day it was moved. But why?
looks like there's some connection between the sacred urn and the murder case. Why? Why do you think so, Nick? Because that night, the real thief, Rhonda Light, was at KB security. So then why did another Mask to Mask show up here? A lot of different things are pointing to one undeniable fact. One undeniable fact? The murder trial is starting tomorrow. It looks like that thief is going to be making another appearance. Well, I think that our investigations are just about up and ready for court tomorrow. Stick around, stay tuned. I hope you've been enjoying it so far. Sorry about chasing my tail a little bit there. Uh, this game always tends to do that sometimes, uh, especially this, this earlier trilogy. Um, but we got it figured out. We're good. We're fine. And I'm still enjoying it. So, because this is my favorite case. And we are... Uh, through with part three of it. So stick around, stay tuned for part four, and I will talk to you guys then.